Republican Congressman Pat Fallon of the 4th Congressional District here in North Texas. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for having me on, Jack. I appreciate it. So what was your reaction to the Supreme Court's ruling today on the Trump immunity case? Well, honestly, Jack, as an American, I think they got it exactly right because I don't know of many people, if any, that want the president to be above the law and to be able to commit criminal acts simply because he or she is in office. At the same time, we want to protect the president when they're, he or she is doing their official duties. And so much as you don't want, if uh, the other party wins the next election, to have that former president be tried for decisions they made that were you know, largely uh, policy related. And I spoke with uh, Congressman Lloyd Doggett of Austin a short time ago, and he called it an extremely alarming decision and said he thought it, uh, he says that he thought it's a giant leap down the path of dictatorship and would create a, a strong man for, or a strong woman for president uh, if, for example, uh, former President Trump is reelected. Your reaction to that? Complete fear mongering, uh, hyperbole, quite frankly. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Considering that, let's say, take for instance Richard Nixon, what he did was outside the bounds of the law. That wasn't, he wasn't acting in this official capacity to authorize a break in to spy on the Democratic National Committee to, you know, and, and also when he was, uh, had the plumbers, which were trying to plug leaks and things like that. There's a lawful way about doing things and there's an unlawful way. And just because, let's say, for instance, a future president, Democrat or Republican, were to go in to, you know, uh, send American troops into harm's way, are they going to be tried criminally for something like that? I mean, so the Supreme Court simply said, it hasn't happened before. We don't want it to happen like that. We don't want to go down the path of it a banana republic. And unfortunately, some of my more liberal Democratic colleagues cannot see the forest through the trees vis-a-vis -vis this ruling. And do you think this raises the stakes for this election? No, I, I, no, I don't know. I mean, this is if I were President Trump, I would have liked to have seen him talk about uh, during the debate that, look, there's going to be a lot of fear mongering. I was president for four years. I mean, I remember the fear mongering from 2016. He was going to get us into World War III. Russia was going to control him, et cetera. And, I, and funny thing, odd, odd enough, oddly enough, that he's the only president since Vladimir Putin took power in Russia where Vladimir Putin didn't have any new military adventures. For the four years President Trump was in office, Vladimir Putin was kept in check. So the reality, uh, the actual, you know, our past proves that that wasn't the case. So I think that we're gonna, what we're gonna have if we have four more years of President Trump is we're gonna have uh, economic growth, prosperity and projecting power on the world stage. What impact do you think this will have on the campaigns? Well, it certainly didn't help the Biden campaign. And I think largely, we, we, you know, you and everyone else, what the world saw was Joe Biden is not really competent to be president any longer. It's unfortunate and it's sad, but it's, uh, I think, a form of elder abuse. And, you know, we've seen that. And so I think the Biden strategy was let's get our partisans to uh, indict the former president. And then let's convict him of a felony so we can say repeatedly over and over. And trust me, in October, we're going to have these ads. Uh, we're going to be all subject to them where it says convicted felon, convicted felon, convicted felon, Donald Trump, as if they're synonymous. The fact of the matter is he's only been tried in extraordinarily Democratic areas by democratically appointed or elected officials. And that smacks of really, as I said before, the retribution that you see in a banana republic. And do you think it's better for Republicans if President Biden stays, uh, you know, and runs for <clears throat> re-election, or is it better for Republicans if he decides to relinquish his delegates and and not run for re-election? Mm -hmm. Let's wear two hats. As an American, I don't think he should be president any longer, and I fully support his cabinet invoking the Twenty Fifth Amendment because he's clearly not competent. That's as an American. As a partisan Republican, if you had to select the person that you'd want to run against. It would be Joe Biden, of course. I mean, he can't. I don't think he can win the election. I think he's going to lose it and lose it in a landslide. And the difficulty the Democrats have is you can't just replace him unless he wants to be replaced. If he wants to stay put, there's really no mechanism for his removal. He won the delegates in, in their process. And I think that his wife and his hangers on and his staff and the bureaucrats that are running the show right now don't want him to leave because he's their convenient figurehead and they don't want to really curse that power. Uh, last question, I want to go back to the Supreme Court ruling, and that is uh, when I spoke with Congressman Doggett, uh, he said he was concerned that if 
uh, the former president, is reelected in November, that he will make this federal prosecution, uh, all the federal prosecutions, go away. Um, what do you say to that? Was Lloyd refer referring to President Trump's prosecutions? Yes, the the uh, the Washington D.C. case, both both federal prosecutions involving the special counsel Jack Smith. Yeah, I I don't I haven't had seen any indication that it would, uh, lead, lead me to believe that President Trump is going to take that action again. I think that's fear mongering on the the left's part, and I think the cases are extraordinarily weak now, considering that they have to be even further constrained by the Supreme Court decision. And the, the case down in Atlanta, I know that's not federal, but that's an absolute joke. And so is the the one up in New York City. I think that's going to be a term, overturned on appeal. But that wasn't the point. The point was to get him convicted prior to the November election. All right. Congressman Pat Fallon, Republican from the 4th Congressional District here in North Texas. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Jack. God bless. Take care.